Sananda for the first time in the, in the late 1980s in uh, in Western Massachusetts. I had made a decision to go work in the refugee camps yeah. at that time and did some volunteer work at the uh, refugee resettlement office in Western Massachusetts, and that's where I came to know and really appreciate and love many of the Cambodian refugees there that were building a forest uh, a forest monastery for Mahagosananda in Western Massachusetts and so that's how I came into his uh, wonderful circle and um, this led to a trip to to the refugee camps in it was in 88, late 88, after founding a, uh, an educational nonprofit called the Khmer Buddhist Educational Assistance Project, that uh, Mahagosananda was the honorary founding patron of. You know. So, anyway. So from, the, from the very beginning, uh, you know, we worked very closely uh, with Mahagosananda, especially trying to do so in in his spirit. He having established many of the temples in the refugee camps and revived Buddhism there, you know, and so that that was the purpose of our uh, NGO at that time. We were actually a joint project. We weren't our own NGO, but we were a joint project of the, of the American Institute for Buddhist Studies, which was based in Amherst, Massachusetts at that time, and the Khmer Studies Institute, which was based in Hartford, Connecticut. So we were a joint project of two uh, tax-exempt American organizations. And so, uh, we we were not our own legal entity at that time. We were just a project of these two two uh, American NGOs uh, or Khmer American NGOs. And it was in the late late 90s when I came back to the United States that we actually formed our own uh, tax ex tax exempt 501c3 organization. But all the during the whole time, really just inspired by the uh, the example and the spiritual presence of, of Mahagosananda, with whom I just ran into in Thailand and in Cambodia and in America and so on, uh, just like that. We never. It was very hard to pin Mahagosananda down. He uh, he 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 just. Uh, you know, traveled on his own, traveled very lightly, and traveled with his, uh, you know, monk's bag that mainly contained little Dharma texts that he would always pull out and uh, give to anyone whom he met. You know, mm -hmm. that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of monk that he was. So we worked in the refugee camps for two years, working in the temples in all of the refugee camps and we helped uh, the Coalition for Peace and Reconciliation organize the first Dharma, uh, th Dharma walk or the Dhamma Yatra. This was in early 19, uh, 
1992. And what happened then was that uh, the CPR, they were a peace advocacy group based in Tapraya, near site, the Site 2 camp, and the, because they were act, an activist organization, the Thai military didn't give them any uh, passes to the camps. So Bob and Liz, who were running uh, the CPR at that time, uh, they asked me and Keep to take Mahagosananda to the various camps to recruit the monks and the nuns uh, and the lay people for the first uh, Dhammayatra, which left uh, which left Aranya Pratet in April of 1992, and it took about one month uh, along Route 6 to reach uh, the Chede in front of the uh, train station, where on Visak Buchia Day in May where then the then Prince Sihanouk and other government officials received, received Mahagosananda and, and all of the walkers. So these are like the beginnings of, of, our, of our little uh, Buddhist uh, educational nonprofit and my interactions with, uh, with Mahagosananda. So you play a more supporting role, no? And some night is more on organizing. The well, the first, the he, first what was interesting is that uh, originally the idea, there was talk among the NGO community and CPR of just doing a peace march. But then Mahagosananda came into the picture and he, he said, well, let's, let's make it a Dhammayatra, which means a pilgrimage for the truth. A walk for the Dharma, and it was at that point that uh, really the Dhamma Yatra began. But there was some prior to that. There was interest among some of the Western NGOs to uh, to just organize a peace march. But when it became a Dhamma Yatra, that's that's when I personally became interested in the project <laughs> because it was it was it. You know, Mahagosananda gave it a, a deeply Buddhist and spiritual uh, stamp and uh, aura, and that that's how that's how I and and keep my uh, my little NGO. That's how we became actively involved in helping CPR to uh, to organize it. ខ្ញុំបានចងចាំនៅសម្ដេចកាលខ្ញុំធ្វើការនឹងដើរដើម្បីសន្តិភាពការនោះ <coughs> đại ban nòm bề song nâng đôn chi chi sao vẹt robot bề óng từ can ti đại miền chìm lú đã bay phía diêm đỏ sài bảy nhà hà robot nẹt đại cầm bông rong tục pi tùm nọ được chế sản đại bề hòa há chiên nẹt phát đòn nâu cầm nứt này thom diệt ra đại đào tam chìm hiền đầm bông robot bề bột went to the Khmer Rouge camp site eight and uh, tried to interest the monks there there was a wat there this was Yang Sari's camp site eight and uh, I remember that uh, he was very well received by that Wat. There were about 15 monks there, but the Khmer Rouge administrators, they would not allow any of the monks or the nuns or the lay people to join the walk. You know. But that experience was very, uh, was a very moving one of him going actually to the Khmer Rouge to uh, ask them to join together in a peace walk. Can you uh, tell uh, who participated during that time uh, as the participant, as the supporter, organizer? Well, the main organizers were, were it was a cluster of, uh, you know, mainly Western NGOs, but the, the, the principal organization was, the co as I mentioned, the Coalition for Peace and Reconciliation that was 
the main one. Huh? That was run. That was run by uh, Bob Mott, who was a Jesuit brother, and Liz Bernstein. And they were. The office was based in Tapria. And then when they came into touch with uh, with Mahagosananda, that's when the Dhammayatra was born in early 1992. And then there were just there were just a few months to organize to recruit the monks and the nuns who walked and the lay people. So the the walk was very successful at that time. And any challenge that you observe during the first walk? Challenges that you... Well, this was the first walk and uh, really didn't know what, what to expect. I know that the government here was, was a bit nervous and suspicious about what the, the impact of this might be, you know, and uh, they kept a very close watch on the walkers, on the whole Dhamma Yatra, and uh, they uh, controlled it very much when uh, the Dhamma Yatra finally entered Phnom Penh, you know, and uh, didn't, allow, didn't allow the Dhamma Yatra to walk around Phnom. Once we got to Wat Bhutom, we basically had to stay there and I remember the government saying, okay, you can walk to uh, Ek, Ek Chung. Ek Chung. Ek Chung, where, where, the, uh, you know, where the, there was a monument you know, of, of the skulls and the bones. We, oh. could, do a, we could do a Dhamma Yatra there. Chung Aik. Chung Aik. Chung Aik. Okay, it was yeah. Chung Aik. They allowed us to walk there, but uh, not to walk around Phnom Penh. No, Phnom Penh. So we had, to, we had to stay put basically in uh, in Wat Butom, you know. So, but it was a very peaceful walk, and I think that the you know the authorities uh, you know didn't have uh, they had no grounds to uh, you know suspect, suspect any suspect any you know motives that were that had a political uh, you know aspect to it. So. In terms of uh, international involvement, what have you remember about his involvement at the UN level, international level? Do you have some any memory about about this? How he involved in, in at the UN level? What he did, he do, what he achieved? I'm not that sure that how that the UN uh, played a played a large role. I know one of his disciples in the camps was Venerable Yohut, and the UN did did recruit him <coughs> to conduct uh, human rights training, Buddhism and human rights training in the camps, and they they did use Venerable Yohut as as an, as an advisor. But I don't recall that. Uh, that Mahagosananda himself was in any way affiliated with the uh, with the UN.